Is Blender enough for making 3D content? Hello there, my name is Ismaus and today we're going to be answering the question, is Blender enough for making 3D content? And by 3D content, I mean anything and everything related to 3D, others including visual effects, games, VR, architectural visualization, and more. So instead of giving one broad answer like yes or no, let's break down the different types of 3D content, look at what has been done using Blender and where Blender struggles are sometimes. So buckle up, it's gonna get wild. Number one, 3D modeling. This is the easiest to answer as you only need to head over to ArtStation or Instagram or Twitter and you will see tons of really good models all done exclusively in Blender. And if I'm to rank Blender in this area, I'll give it a solid 10 out of 10 because anything you can model in 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D or any other professional 3D software, you can model in Blender. Number two, sculpting. Sculpting usually goes with modeling, but it's so different from other ways of modeling that it deserves its own comparison. There are also more than a few applications dedicated to just sculpting, and yes, there are more than one way of modeling if you are not aware of that. And these include uh, polygon modeling, uh, which just involves manipulating polygons and grabbing vertices, faces, edges, uh, nubs modeling. Uh, this is not very common with 3D applications. It's more common in the vehicle design industry, and then there is uh, sculpting. For sculpting, I'll give Blender 2.8 a score of 7 out of 10 because of the improvements in the sculpting tool, but because it can't handle high polygon counts, its score is low and also because in this space, a zip brush is the king. Number 3. Rigging and Animation Maya has been the industry standard when it comes to rigging and animation, but we are not talking about industry standards, we are talking about you. Uh, you as an individual are creator. Though it does not beat uh, the customization tools and control Maya gives you uh, for rigging and animation, Blender still competes and you can still achieve the same results anyone would get with using Maya. Uh, for that reason, uh, Blender gets a score of 9 out of 10. Number 4. Motion Graphics when you talk about motion graphics, the first thing that comes into mind is Cinema 4D. So if we are making comparisons here, we're making them against uh, Cinema 4D. Blender here struggles a bit as it has no dedicated tools uh, for motion graphics. Cinema 4D on the other hand has more graph. So Blender 2.5 and below scores 4 out of 10 here and uh, because nothing has changed just yet in Blender 2.81, uh, the score remains a 4 out of 10. It's only when you bring in a Blender animation nodes, uh, that's when you start seeing some competition here. But animation nodes is still a work in progress and it's not an official branch of Blender. So we're not sure when it will come to the official Blender or if it will ever come as part of Blender. What I understand is that uh, it's a plugin made by, a com by the community and it's not worked on by the official team at the Blender Foundation. So because of that, uh, the score is 6 out of 10 otherwise it would have been 10 out of 10 because animation nodes is really promising number five motion tracking this is an 8 out of 10 score straight out there is a dedicated motion tracking tool shipped with blender unlike most other 3d application so blender wins this one automatically number six visual effects and simulations Blender can do a lot of simulations. It comes shipped with Blade Physics, which lets you simulate high fidelity rigid body simulations. You can also simulate water, cloth, and the developer team is promising Manta Flow, which will replace the current fluid simulation system and produce better and faster simulations. All this is good, and the problem is lack of finer control over the simulations. You can simulate everything just right, but you don't really have the artistic control over the process. This is where Houdini thrives. It gives you a lot of control. For example, if you want a specific pattern for how you want glass to shatter, there is a tool for that. If you want to delete a single particle from a simulation, there is a tool for that. So Blender scores are 5 out of 10, but no worries. It seems the control we need is coming with everything nodes, but until that comes, the score stays 5 out of 10. Number 7 particle simulations. Before we start on this area, I will first take away one point from Blender just because they removed the reactor particle system during the shift from Blender 2.5, uh, during the shift from Blender 2.4 series to Blender 2.5 series. I understand there must have been a good reason for this, but it's been eight years or more and still nothing to replace. So I'm still hurt from that. Uh, if you don't know what uh, the reactor system was, it's it was basically a system that would let you would simulate particles uh, from a different particle system and each particle, if collided with a different object, it would spark off, it would produce other particles. That was a really good particle system. The reactor particle system was a good uh, particle system for simulating things like 
rain uh, because each rain drop as it hit the ground uh, kind of create more particles to create those splashes but uh, unfortunately when the switch was made was being made to uh, 2.5 the reactor system was removed so yeah i'll take a point from the I'll take one point uh, from the score just for that. A uh, blender's particle system works fine, but but like the physics simulation system, it lacks the finer control that other applications give. In my opinion, Houdini has the best particle system. 3ds Max also has thinking particles, though it does not ship with the application by default. It could be a plugin. Also, Cinema 4D uh, uses uh, thinking particles. I I'm not sure. So Blender for the final score gets a 7 out of 10, a minus the 1 to get it to 6 out of 10. Like many things on this list, there is hope. A lot of work is being put in two new tools and new branches of Blender have been created so as to make development of such tools a bit faster and more organized. Uh, for example, the particle system, to my knowledge, will be getting a needed update with the functions branch, which promises to give more functionality and more control over the particles and did, and the demos really look good. Uh, but until that comes, uh, the score remains 6 out of 10. Rendering. Because of Eevee, I'll give Blender 11 out of 10. So let's break this down a bit. All applications come with their default render engine and so does Blender. It comes with Psychos, a ray tracing render engine capable of producing both photorealistic and non-photorealistic renders. In that area we are covered but it also has Eevee. This is something very few applications have. Uh, Eevee lets you develop the look you like, uh, preview your materials as you're working on them and if you have a cheap PC like mine you, you can also use it to render your final scenes. Uh, this list can go on forever as there are so many things that can go in here, uh, for example texturing, UV mapping, editing, lighting, shader creation, scripting, creating game content, baking, architectural visualization and more. But unfortunately we don't have the time to cover all of that. So here is my conclusion. More things you need to do as an independent artist you can do inside Blender without needing any plugins or add-ons. Add-on can help speed up your workflow and even add more functionality but for the most part everything can be done inside Blender. This is also true for studios and as we're starting to see more and more studios switching to Blender now. So yes Blender is enough for creating 3D content as though with some things it might take longer maybe a bit harder but you will still get there. And like any other 3D application, Cinema 4D, uh, 3DS Max, uh, Maya, they don't always do everything. Even professional studios using such uh, 3D applications always have to switch to other applications uh, to kind of handle other things where that application doesn't uh, fit very well. For, for example, if you're modeling in 3ds Max or Maya or sculpting in ZBrush, you'll find that texturing might be a bit harder uh, and then end up using uh, Substance Painter to do the texturing for you. And uh, some studios or some artists uh, don't even do uh, shaders in the in the native application. Uh, they switch to Substance Designer to create other materials or shaders and then import them directly into the 3D application and do uh, things uh, directly there. But uh, if you don't want to spend money, um, maybe you're tight on the budget, uh, you can just use Blender for everything like that. It's only when you start diving into really, really complex projects that need a lot of managing a different type of workflow that you might have to invest into a different application like that. But uh, for, mo for the most part, Blender is enough for 3D creation. I uh, thank you for watching. If you found this useful, please leave a like, uh, subscribe, share this with anyone who might be interested in it. And uh, yeah, thank you.